In this video, we're going to talk about gap settings and how they affect your toolpaths. What is a gap? Gaps occur at the end of a slice. A slice is calculated as the surface and plane intersections occur. At the end of the surface and plane intersection is the start of the gap motion. Gaps will vary depending on the variety of factors. Step over value of a toolpath, cutting method, zigzag or one way, and gap size value. Let's take a look at the surface finish parallel toolpath. We'll go ahead and select the toolpath and we can see the motion. We're using a zigzag option and we're starting from the lower left and moving left to right and then between cuts and slices. So as we talk about a gap definition, a gap in Mastercam is a distance from the end point of one toolpath slice to the start point of the next slice. So let's take a look at that. So we're going to basically step through this toolpath just a couple of motions. So I'm going to bring the tool down, move across to the end, and I'm going to actually turn this over a little bit so you can see this a little bit. And we came to the end of one slice. Now we're going to move to the next slice. And this is usually where it occurs, the tool retracts is between slices. So this is a 50,000 step over. We'll let it go back down, come back up, and you'll see that creates another slice, moves over, and creates another slice. So as you can see, very clean, flat, no problems, no issues at all. But I can go in there and make modifications that will actually change that thought. So for example, I'm going to go ahead and stop, and we'll go into parameters. And let's go and look at gap settings. Let's start before we go into gap settings. Let's take a look at how our settings are right now. We have a zigzag motion. We have a max step over of 50 thousandths. And we're using a machining angle of zero. So when we look at a machining angle, zero's master cam is over here to the right. So the tool is going to always start from the left to move to the right. So let's go into gap settings. We're going to break this down a little bit. As we're going to talk about the gap settings here that we have on the screen, let's look at what is a gap. Let's define the terms. Gaps are the spaces between slices when a toolpath is calculating, the motion across or along a surface. Gaps control retracts reposition behavior between cuts. Defining a gap is done by either distance or a percentage of the tool. So let's start with gap size. This section defines the distance between slice points. Distance and step over. One is physical distance value. The other is a percentage of the step over. This setting is very important. Let's look at our gap size. We have a percentage of the step over. It's set at 300% of the step over. Let's see if we change that to say 50% of the actual percentage of this tool step over. We'll go ahead and set that up, regenerate that, and you'll notice that the tool lifts between each slice, being that the gap percentage is smaller than the gap between each slice. So as you can see, the tool picks up like a sewing machine. So if we set that for 100%, or actually let's do ahead and set that for 101%, with this nice clean flat surface. You'll see in that case, we have a nice clean step over between each slice. Let's look at another settings. So going back into the parameters, we have this set for zigzag. Let's set it for one way. We'll go back into gap settings. We'll leave it at 300% again. We'll say OK. We'll regenerate that. 
So we have what we consider a one-way motion. Tool comes down, steps over, picks up, moves over to start over again, being to each slice. Now, could we force that to stay down by enlarging our gap size? I think we can. Let's go back into the parameters. Let's look at our gap size. So, 300% of our step over. What comes useful is also is the other option of distance. So let's take a look. If we leave this at 0.1 and regenerate that, we can see nothing has changed. But we also notice that I've marked this as a 5 inch by 5 inch. So, what is the gap between each slice? The actual gap distance between each slice is that distance when it goes from the beginning of one slice to the beginning of the next slice. So how does that work? Our first slice comes along, it picks up and moves back five inches to start over again. So our gap is now five inches. So what about if we actually gave a force gap size value by a distance? Let's put 5.1, just over the distance of that five inch. Green check, green check, and regenerate that. You'll notice the tool stays down. Let's look at that. How is that tool staying down? Let's turn off the tool holder and look at the motion. As we step through, starts one slice, feeds back across at a slight angle here. To the next cut, feeds back across. Once again, feed across. You can see that it's actually going at an angle back to the beginning of the slice. But it is keeping the tool down. So I'm basically getting a zigzag motion, but not a direct zigzag back and forth. But I am able to keep that tool down by enlarging the distance being larger than our gap size. So let's reprise on what we've learned about gap size. So as we look here at the percentage of step over, it is set at 300%. If we mark that at 100%, 100% would be the equivalent of 50,000. So at a value of 300%, Equivalent to our max step over would be three times the amount, being the equivalent of a hundred and fifty thousandths. So to keep the tool down at the distance that we're going, we're going to need a larger value. A less value being, say, 50% or less of the actual step over would make the tool lift. Distance. Now, of course, you can go to a percentage, for example, you know, you can go up to say a thousand percent, two thousand percent. Sometimes it's easier actually just to put an actual distance in. Like we had done in this last one, we looked at is that, of course, point one is larger than fifty thousandths step over between slices. But our actual setting this at one way gave us a gap size of over five inches because it was the start from one slice to the next slice and the step between. So when we set this for 5.1, we actually were larger than the actual gap, so it kept the tool down. As we move down to our next section, we're going to look at gap definition and continue through. So starting in this one section, the gap settings control tool retract behavior. Motion less than the gap size keeps the tool down. In contact with the surface, there's four methods. When the gap distance exceeded, the tool will always retract. 
So as we're going to look at the tool motion less than gap size keep tool down area, we have what we call tool motion less than gap size. These settings control the method that the tool uses to stay down on the surface. One, direct, two, broken, three, smooth, and four, follow surfaces. So we can see where are those settings. Those settings are actually right here. So we can see that we have direct, broken, smooth, and follow surfaces. Now this motion that you're seeing in these controls is what happens between each slice at the gap motion usually at the end of the surface when it transitions from one slice to the next slice or from one cut to the next cut. So we'll start off with direct. We have step over 300 percent. We have direct. Go ahead and apply that. We're going to set our cutting method back to zigzag and machining angle will leave it zero. Now we have the setback for zigzag. We have 50,000 step over. We have the machining angle. Let's make a little bit larger just so we can see it even more. So we'll say 100,000 step over. We'll say okay and we're going to regenerate that. So of course we have our back and forth motion, our zigzag. Now the way this is set is I'll go ahead and turn off the rectangular outside profile as you saw earlier. Doesn't look really any different in this case as you can see is that between slices it actually comes to the end and it does a basically a straight linear motion across this edge and back. So it's a nice transition from one slice to the next slice. Let's go back into parameters, gap settings. Now we can do a couple of things with these tools, but before we go on and look at some of these other ones, we are going to actually start to see a little bit different in our other file, for example, for samples. But let's take a look at the secondary one, direct. Now we have broken. In this case, this will come more into play on our next file is by that when you look at this particular motion what's going to happen is between slices between cuts the tool is going to lift pick up and move over and drop back down to make the next cut when we look at smooth as you can see it looks like it's adding like a little arc at the end let's go ahead and back plot that one on this flat surface we'll see that We'll regenerate that. And you can see now that it's created these small, looks like a loop. In this case, they are going to filter out, if possible, to create an arc interpolation. But by default, they will be point to point. So as we can see, we have a nice clean motion between each slice. Going back into our parameters our gap settings. We have follow surfaces. Once again this will be more defined when we go into our next file but at this particular time definition thought is that when it moves along say a convex surface between another surface on that the transition will try to keep the tool to follow the surface and follow the motion in the transition keeping the tool down at all times. Now what I'm going to do is actually take this and set it for smooth and I want to go down here to the bottom where we see tangential arc radius, tangential arc angle and tangential line length. So what I'm going to actually do is start off using the line length I'm going to set it for, let's say, 125 thousandths. I'll go ahead and regenerate that. 
you'll notice that the actual toolpath extends along the cut direction and extends off the edge of the surface. So you have a way of controlling in this case but only along the cut direction that the surface can extend over the edges. But we also make it work as a smooth transition. We have more tools. Looking at our parameters and back to our gap settings on that, let's go ahead and add a tangential angle. Let's say 10 degrees and we'll add a 0.250 radius. Let's see what we have. Regenerating again. Now what you can see is we actually extended that length out. We have it looks like a 250 radius and tangentially off the edge of that radius we curve up 10 degrees. So of course we can make that more extreme. But that motion, especially at higher speeds, being able to roll off the edge, come up, roll around, and come back down, is much cleaner and much faster motion. So let's go ahead and close that. Let's go back into our gap settings. So you can see that we have tools that work to extend give us a slight angle off the surface and a nice radius blend off. Now these don't work with all. Let's look at that. So for example, direct, not a problem. Broken, not a problem. Smooth, not a problem. Now let's take it follow surfaces. So in this case, since I have information in there, it says tangible arc or radius and line must be zero. So of course if we put these to zero on that and we go back to follow surfaces you'll see that that grays that out because it's now going to follow the surface in this case so there's no place for it to run off the edge of the surface when it's trying to truly keep the tool along. Let's review the other options we have under our motion less than gap size keep tool down. We have use plunge retract rate in gap. So in this case, by default, that's off. If you actually turn that on and set a plunge and a retract rate inside of your tool motion on that, you will actually use those feed rates when retracting and plunging between cuts when the tool has to pull out. We also have check gap motion for gouge. That's on by default, and that gives us basically gouge protection between motions. So at the end of the surface between slices that when the tool transition that it pays attention not to gouge the surface as it comes back into contact with the surface if it leaves. Now we also have motion greater than gap size retract. So as we look at that we also can see that that's checked check retract motion for gouge. This tool motion greater than gap size. When the gap size is exceeded, master camera retract the tool. This is retraction varies depending on the style of tool path you use. In the gap settings dialog box, there's only one option in this section. Check retract motion for gouge. So as the tool has to retract and pull out, it's going to look to see if it's going to gouge against the surface or another surface nearby. So we have other options here. We'll call those the miscellaneous gap options. We have optimized cut order, plunge into previously cut area, and follow containment boundary at gap. So in this case, optimized cut order. Sometimes the software needs to pick up, move between cuts. In this case, if we have multiple surfaces, it might want to pick up and do one area for a section for a little bit, then a gap comes up, it picks up and moves over to another area to start pathing again, 
where in this case I would like the tool to stay optimized in that area of the last motion where it picked up and when it comes back down. So by selecting that, I'm trying to keep between gaps if it has to tool has to retract, not to pick up and move over to a completely different area along my surfaces. Plunge into previous cut area. So for example, as the tool retracts, it picks up, moves over, and starts where the next slice is going to go. In this case, by using this option, you're going to get the tool to offset a little bit over where the last tool picked up from and plunge back down into there, then move over to make its cut. That way, it's not plunging into the material, but plunging into where it's already been cut. We also have follow containment boundary at gap. This moves the tool in an X and Y direction to stay on the tool containment boundary at gaps. As you can see we have quite a few options here as we've gone through basically the standard gap settings under our classic tool pass. I think what we need to do now is look at the options when it comes to surface high speed, for example. So let's go ahead and close this. Let's go back into our operations manager and look at the parameters for this high speed raster toolpath. So let's take a look at that motion. One of the nice things about that being the HST as you can see as the tool comes down linear and actually has a feed motion with an arc engagement into the cut instead of plunging into the toolpath. As you'll know that basically Mastercam will take the tool to the center point and the edge of the surface. So in that case on so standard parallel the tool wants to start with the center of the tool right at the edge of the surface compared to in this case the HST wants to gradually engage with the material. So looking at our parameters, let's go ahead and close that. Parameters. Let's look through cut parameters. So looking at our cut parameters, we have over here what we've seen before is keep the tool down within. So there is your percentage, but in this case they have a percentage of the tool diameter so percentage of the tool diameter, what is this telling us? It's telling us if the distance from the end of one pass to the start of the next pass is less than this distance, defined as a percent of the tool diameter, Mastercam will not create a retract move as defined on the linking page. Instead, the tool will stay on the surface and move directly between the passes at that feed rate. And of course we also still have our option of distance in this case. But they do give you a few other settings here for one way, other way, zigzag, downhill and uphill so that can change on some of these options so having that distance or percentage of the tool diameter is very helpful. Now, what do we have otherwise compared to the classic toolpath? We have what we call transitions. And you'll see the transitions, these should look familiar. This would be our direct, being the straight motion, and we have the option of smooth, in this case being a small loop. We do not have any of the other options to extend or curve at an angle and move off in a radius, retract off the edge of a surface. As we can see, there's only the two options in this case in controllability compared to the classic. So let's go ahead and look at a different file. So we'll go ahead and close this. We're going to go ahead and file and open and save and I'm going to go ahead and open up another model. Now that we've opened this file, let's look at this motion of this toolpath. Surface finish parallel, one of our classical toolpaths. So I'll go ahead and left click on toolpath 
and you'll see that'll automatically set this up for backplot and give us an option to look at the motion. So as you can see we have quite a bit of retracts along the edges. Another thing we want to look at is how is it handling the transition and what the settings are at the edges of our toolpath. So let's go back into the parameters, gap settings, we have broken. You'll find that to usually be the default is broken. So what that wants to do is lift between cuts. Let's see if we can see that. So as we let set that for back plot, and we start to zoom in, we can see that. So between each slice, for example, as I bring that tool here, see if we can move around a little bit easier right here. And I'll use the S key on my keyboard. You see the tool is actually moving off the edge of the surface and then down to make its next cut. And you can see each motion as the surface com comes along the slice, picks off the edge of the surface and drops back down to a constant contact as much as possible but between the gaps and between the steps it's actually lifting that tool up. But we do have some areas where the end of our slices end and they're larger steps so the tool is retracting. So we're going to see if we can actually keep that down a little bit more by using our gap settings. So we'll go back in there and we'll try a couple of percentages for example let's go gap settings and let's say 700 percent. So in this case what is that? That's seven times the amount of 15 thousandths our step over. We'll regenerate that. Set that for back plot. Looks a lot better. But obviously in some cases the gap between one step to the next is still larger than that value. So for example from this one cut here where it picks up and moves to this next motion on that. I wonder if we could just get a small guess you know let's try this. Let's go analyze distance. I'm going to hold the control D down and I might just kind of click here and click about here in 3D space. Roughly it's about a hundred and seventy thousandths. So if we go back into parameters, gap settings, in this case let's try point two and see if that helps along with that one particular cut. So there's that same motion. So now what Mastercam is doing is just trying to keep the tool down. So instead of actually pulling out in a rapid motion, moving over to the next cut, it's actually going to slightly pick up, move off the edge of the surface, and then feed back down. So it's always in a feed motion and actually never actually going into a geo rapid and then rapiding back down. So let's back out a little bit and look at our model and see what we have for motion now. We still have a few more in there. Of course, you know, this is a larger gap here. Same thing back here. So I probably safe to say if I turned around and set my gaps to a lot of time what I'll do is I'll usually just go right after one inch and say okay and regenerate that. we can see we have one entry and one exit. So pretty much we're trying to keep that tool down. Here's that other retraction. So what Mastercam does, how does it figure out it can handle it? It doesn't want to gouge along or move along the surface so in this case it's going to pick up, step out and drop back down but always at a feed motion. 
So let's change a couple of these parameters, our gap settings. So for example, let's look at smooth. Let's say OK. OK, and regenerate that. as you can see Mastercam actually now doesn't do that pick up the tool and transition but the tool actually moves off the edge of the surface and comes back on to continue the cut so instead of actually stepping up and off of the surface between slices let's go ahead and look at the option for follow surfaces. Looking at that same motion, so in this case between each cut, it came back across, you can see that the tool moved along the surface and kept it down no stepping up, no moving off the edge, an extension of trying to loop that back on. So you can see we have quite a bit of control over how it acts between cuts and between slices. Let's do one more look here by that if we go back into our gap settings and I'll go ahead and use smooth and I'll put a transition of say 0.150 regenerate that and we can see in this case it tries to extend off as much as possible and of course because the transition of where that edge is between slices sometimes you're not going to always get a good clean loop off of an edge but it's going to do its best to do that so for example here as we can see as it tried to calculate that edge at that particular point and the tool actually comes up steps down a little bit then loops around comes down so you'll see that sometimes where it might not come across as it's trying to calculate to keep that tool along. In this case too you can see we're still getting by giving a larger gap value and forcing the tool to step keep down we get some of these step outs between our toolpath motion. So as we've learned we have a lot of controls in how the tool transitions, keeping the tool down, and what is happening between each slice or each cut. What kind of motion control do we have? When you look at the classic settings like this, we have a lot of control. I hope you find this useful and helpful in your adventures using Mastercam. Thank you.